Terrestrial RS is the protocol that is getting more and more popular these days. Probably because of the problems that Crossfire has had with manufacturing, it's making the Express Lawyers protocol even more famous. So, even though I consider Express Lawyers quite easy to use and bind, there are still some small problems coming up time to time. And I think it's because of the flexibility of the whole ecosystem. We have many manufacturers trying to do uh, receivers and transmitters. And with that, you know, you get problems time to time. What I want to do today in this video is to give you some tools uh, for troubleshooting, thinking especially on two cases that are happening very often and my customers are either calling me because they have these problems or sending me back their drones for me to fix them. So let me start showing you this one, the first one. Okay, so I have here my flight controller, my Express Lores connected normally as you would do, five volts, ground and TX and RX to one UART. The problem that is happening is that if I power this, and this is a way to troubleshoot this problem, right? If I power this, the receiver is getting uh, power. You see here, we're getting power, but you have a solid light. If you go to the wiki for Express LRS and you check the LED statuses, you're gonna see that solid light, green or blue, I don't, I don't know what, I think they say green, but I, it looks more like a blue to me. It could mean either that the receiver is actually bound to the transmitter or that the receiver is in bootloader mode. There is no way that this receiver is bound to anything because my radio is completely off, which means that this receiver is in bootloader mode. And this is something that is happening without anything. You see that I'm, I'm just connecting it to a regular UART and the receiver is actually in bootloader mode. What's happening here is that the flight controllers, some flight controllers, not all of them, it's putting the receiver in bootloader mode just by starting it. There are two solutions to this problem. One is to add a resistor on the RX of the receiver, which I'm guessing that a lot of people won't take that way because either you don't have a resistor like that, you have to check the, the value of that resistor and to solder it and put it in the drone, it's gonna get complicated. The second way, it's what I'm going to show you, which is just to move this receiver to another UART. So let me resolder this and show you that if I move this receiver to another UART, it's gonna work as expected. Okay, power and ground stays the same place. I just move RX and TX to T1 and R1. And now if I power this flight controller, we're gonna get our receiver in uh, looking for binding mode. And here you can do everything that you want, right? If I wait 30 seconds, it's gonna get into Wi-Fi and that's gonna work and you can uh, compile it and, and change it and upgrade it and all those things. Again, the problem is with the, the UARTs on the flight controller. And either you have to change it to another UART or you have to put that resistor on the RXs. For many, it's gonna be a, a bit complicated to move the UART because you already have something else there and you have to move the whole thing, but I think that's the, the best solution that you can have when you have these kind of problems. This doesn't happen with all the flight controllers. This doesn't happen with all the receivers. I'm pretty sure that this happens with this flight controller, the GEPRC F411 all-in-one 35 amp because it, I have fixed many of these ones in the past, so I know that it happens. And I know that it happens with this receiver as well, which is a Gepard C receiver. The next tip that I'm going to talk about is related to the O3, and probably with the Vista as well. 
both those units have a receiver in integrated, right? Like the DJI receiver. And if you look at the cables that are coming out of the unit, you have one cable that is S-Bus and one extra ground. You have two grounds on, those, on, on, on that uh, connector. What's happening is that a lot of flight controllers, like for example, this one, has a connector for the DJI cable, right? That connector, it's mapped to some pads outside of the, of the flight controller. And what happens is that many times you are connecting your Express LRS and you are using the same port that is used by the S bus cable on that connector. Let's say, for example, the connector is mapping the S bus cable or pin to R2, for example. And you're connecting your soldering the Express LRS into the R2 as well that is creating some kind of uh, interference because now you have two things connected to the same path. You have the S bus coming from the O3 and you have the RX or the TX coming from your Express LRS receiver. The problem then is that sometimes it's gonna work. The symptoms that you're gonna see is that the receiver sometimes is gonna work and sometimes it's not gonna work. In some cases with some specific receiver has seen that it doesn't work at all. It, the, the receiver itself bound to the radio, but then when you go to Betaflag and you try to see if it's doing something in Betaflag, you don't see any kind of movement. The solution is super, super simple, right? Like you're not gonna be using the DJI uh, protocol anymore to control your, your drone. And therefore in, in the harness, in the cable that you get from DJI, you are just going to remove the cable that is for the S-Bus and the ground that is attached to that S-Bus cable. You remove these two cables, which are normally the last two on the harness, and either by cutting, I like it more if you, if you lift the, 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 the plastic here and you just remove the cables from both sides, and then you have a very clean cable to connect to your O3 and your drone. And that's the solution that you're gonna have for that problem. That, that problem is a little bit more complicated to see because sometimes you get some parts, like let's say that what's happening very often to my customers, they buy a Crossfire uh, drone Binance flight and then they decide that they change, they want to change to Express LRS. In the Crossfire, with Crossfire, this interference is not happening. Don't ask me why but you can have the s bus from DJI and the Crossfire solder in the same port and there is not gonna be interference. So manufacturers are sending it, are sending the cable with all the cables in and there's no problem as long as it's Crossfire, but then the customer comes, change the Crossfire to Express LRS, they use exactly the same cables, exactly in the same place, exactly the same UART, and they actually bind that Express LRS receiver to the radio, but there is no movement in beta flight or the drone. It's, it's kind of difficult to see the problem, right? But now you know, it's just to remove that S-Bus cable and everything is gonna be fine. I know that one manufacturer is actually pointing this out on the manual of the flight controller, it's a SpeedyV. I'm not sure that anyone else is, is doing it, if you know of anyone else, let me know in the comments because it will be good to, to let people know about this problem uh, so they, they just don't run on it. This is what I have for you today. Hope that you got something good out of it and thank you for watching. See you soon.